uh, uh, supposed to be ready. You know, you are going to read the scripture. Amen. Is the church still praying for me? Yes. Uh, gathering my strength back home. Wow. Oh. Hallelujah. It's there. The designated Bible read. Where? Why are you not following my sermons for the past few weeks? Yeah. 116, yes, I knew, I knew what was true. Mm. Right, um, verse 16. <clears throat> for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Yes. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. Yeah. For since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even by eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, yes. nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened, verse 22. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them to uncleanliness in the loss of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their loss for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do these things which are not fitting. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, yes. covetousness yes, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Amen. Amen. Let's give Pastor D a round of applause for helping us. Hallelujah. So for the past few weeks, we have been talking on a topic, it has to be God. And I made some emphasis on the fact that most of the catalog of things that were um, mentioned there, um, including sexual immorality, um, 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 undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, or, and all these kind of stuff, they stem from three important things. I said, number one, the Bible says, because they did not glorify God. I need us to understand that the key word here is that the Bible says that God gave them up. God himself gave them up. Now, one of the things that has been preached constantly in the Pentecostal fraternity is the fact that we always talk about the mercies of God, but we forget that he's the same God that shows mercy and the same God that shows wrath. We forget that God is a father and he disciplines his children. We have come to a particular extent where we believe that we can do anything, act anyhow, do anything, and think we will get away with it. That is not the kind of Christianity, that is not the kind of God we serve. The kind of God we serve has 
standards, has requirements, has and anything he tells us to do has nothing to do with him. It is for our own benefit. We are the beneficiaries of God's instructions. Did I hear an amen? Because there are certain things that do not come to us when we do not do certain things. Did I hear an amen? And 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 Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Now, in the scripture, in verse 21, the Bible says in Romans 1 21, it says, because although they knew God. Now, this is the area that I'm coming to. Many people know God. It is not about knowing God. That is the issue. So how can somebody who knows God be given up to, to, to wickedness, unrighteousness, sexual immorality, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, strife, all this kind of... How can somebody who knows God be given up to such kind of things? How? They said they knew God. They knew God. And I always raise this issue. I was sharing it with somebody during the week again. I was sharing it. I said, I said, I said, one of the things that people do not understand about the ten virgins, isn't it? Five wise. Huh? Five foolish, isn't it? Yeah, I just wanted to check if my uh, <laughs> you know because now, nowadays some people have written the scripture. I just want to be careful. Five wise and five foolish. Now, one of the things people don't realize is that all of them, number one, were virgins. So they were pure. Hello, somebody. They were the, all of them were pure. Virgins, pure. Hello? They were all virgins. Pure, clean. Night meat, you know, fresh, untouched. Hallelujah. Um, well, you know, when we were growing up, my my um, senior brother was he was a devil incarnate. Just to put it, the man, the boy was just something else and i used to wonder he used to have many girls that he messes around with but there's this one girl untouched so one day i went and said you mess around with all these ones sleep with all these ones but this particular one what, what is it ah, you know we can sleep with everybody else so this is the one i intend to marry so untouched and I was looking at all that, the all the other foolish girls that are going to that. He's just he's using you all over the place. Meanwhile, there was one fresh, untouched, preserved, you know, kept. No one to touch. Now, and it brings me to the fact that I used uh, uh, my friends, the guys, our uh, guys, um, when we were growing up, they used to have sisters. Do you understand? There's always a, a secret code amongst the guys. Don't touch my sister. Touch anybody else, you touch my sister, you're dead. You see, it's just this silent secret code that you touch, you die. You touch, you're dead. So one way or the other, the amongst that group, there is no messing around. So one way or the other, the world still appreciates pureness. Hello, somebody. All right, let me give you another example because that's to say that, oh, Pastor, you are going too far. Because nowadays, all this political correctness that doesn't apply to me and all that stuff. Uh, okay, so let me, let, me, let me give you another one. You go into a shop to buy a shoe. Or, or, or a dress. You see the dress. It was the one on the rack. You tried it on. How many of you say, I like this dress, but I want the one that is inside, still wrapped, on charge? Hello? Okay, let's forget about dress because he said maybe I'm being, I'm only focusing on the ladies. You go into a shop, you want to buy a washing machine. And everybody's been opening the washing machine and saying, like that was just okay, let's take it out for you again. Ah, is there not a fresh one, untouched, pure now? 
right? So, so all the virgins were pure in terms of our, our lingua in the evangelical, charismatic, tongue talking, Bible bashing, Episcopalian Christians. That means that they were righteous. Hello, somebody. Now, all of them had oil, which means that all of them had the anointing in our Pentecostal lingua. <laughs> oh, talk to me, church. I'm not... All of them had the anointing. So they were pure, unrighteous, had oil, all of them, anointing. Then they had the lamp, which means that all of them had the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my back. All of them were loaded with the word of God. Hello? Now, all of them were also waiting for Jesus. The whole ten. So the this is where I'm going to. The although they knew God, the difference between the foolish and the wise actually was persistence. You see, well, here's the question. Let me even go, come to another one because you say that oh maybe they were praying more, maybe they were fasting more, maybe they were knew the word of God. No, all of them slept. All of them dozed off. All of them became lukewarm. But there were some who had reservoirs with them that just in case this journey goes longer than before. So, here, this is what I'm saying. Although they knew God, the Romans chapter 1 was saying they knew God. So, how does somebody who knows God still be given up to all these kinds of unrighteousness, deceit, evil mindedness, full of envy? Have you chosen your own there? Uh, um, all backbiters, haters of God, violent. Uh, uh, proud boasters, you know, inventors of evil things. This, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a plethora of all kinds of unrighteousness to somebody who knows God. The key there was number one, as I said three weeks ago, one, they did not glorify God. Glorify God. You can know God and not glorify God. To glorify God, I said, is to honor God is to put God first. And many people don't put God first. To honor God according to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 is honor the Lord with your substance. Many people don't do that. They know God. They quote the scripture. They have the anointing. But they don't glorify God. They don't honor God. When it comes to certain areas of their life, they decide that is why I'm saying there's a difference between you accepting Jesus as your Savior and then also accepting him as your Lord. Savior to redeem you. To deliver you. Lord means you are my master and commander. So from that day onwards, anything you tell me to do, I do. My wife becomes yours. My children becomes yours. My business becomes yours. My career becomes yours. My money becomes yours. But there are certain areas in our lives where we segregate and we tell God, don't touch. I am the Lord. And in those kind of things, we don't glorify God. Number two, they were not thankful. This is what the Bible says, verse 21. Because they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. So, there is a possibility of you saying you glorify God, but you don't glorify him as God. How do you glorify him as God? Because many people just go through the Pentecostal evangelical motions, spiritual gymnastics. Hello? So, we come to church. You're the best thing. You are the best thing. You're the best thing you are. Hello? Bow down and worship. It's time for offering. Uh, uh, let's close the service. 
It's time for your tithe. Ah, so, 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 there are areas that are, you glorify him as God, not when you do the things that are easy. But the things that are not convenient. You glorify him as God when you do the things that are easy to worship as we did, as we knelt down. But you do the hard things when someone offends you and you still forgive. See how the amen went very low. Can you see? See, see, I, can, I know your sitting room. I know what you I, I'm, I'm coming to you. you know, no, seriously. See, 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 when, when, when someone, actually, actually, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 6, or 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says that if you have, if there's an argument, if there's an issue between you and your brother, why do you have to take the matter before an unbeliever? Is there nobody among you that can settle the matter? He said, even if there's nobody that cannot settle the matter, can't you, for Christ's sake, accept wrong? That is why my common talk is that I choose to do right to be right. So, yes, I am not guilty in this matter. But if I begin to drag this matter, it will begin to affect a lot of things around. So, I choose to do the right thing to be right. The other person, I think that they're getting away from me. I mean, think about this, you know, all these things. I hear it so many times, especially in a relationship where somebody is always the guilty party. They are always guilty. They are always guilty. They are always guilty. The other person is always righteous. They are always guilty. And sometimes the person who always, who he, he or she did not offend, sometimes get to a state where they want to say, you know what? Let this thing jag on till eternity. Fact! This time around! I'm not taking nonsense. When they come, I'll show them. So I've been taking a lot of, you know, all this while. I wanted to use a word which you would have identified with, but um, I will use the other one, which is nonsense. Yeah. So, I have to, ah, but today, I'm, I'm a, aha. Now, here's comes the glorify. Immediately, you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Because I have seen situations. I remember the particular issue where I was trying to deal with the couple and I said, okay, you know what? Let us go the cultural way. Okay, how do we sort in your culture? Ah! No, 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 that's not good. Okay. Let us go the normal way. Okay. So I felt I'm, I'm losing this. So the only one I know I can win is okay. Let us go the biblical way. Ah! Get out of my house. <laughs> because as far as I'm concerned, there is no hope. There is absolutely no hope. I've chased people out of my office before, out of my house. Every day. I've walked away from that day because by the time I hit a particular thing where I think you should glorify God and you should be thankful and that isn't happening, then I give up. So, we're now on the last one. So, why were they giving up? Because one, they did, they were, they did not glorify God. They did not honor God. They did not honor him as God. Number two, they, 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 they were not thankful. And we talked about thankful um, last week where people just don't appreciate what God has done for them. They are just, they're just a mourner, constant mourner and everything. Now, the last one today is they, because they did not retain God. Let's go to verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. To a debased mind. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. To retain God means to hold as a possession. To retain God means to hold fast and to keep. It means to be closely joined to a person. Because they did not hold God as a possession in their knowledge. Because they did not hold fast 
and keep God in their knowledge. Because they did not join to God as a person, as the Holy Spirit is the paraclete, either God gave them over to a debased mind. You see, we fill our lives with all sorts of things, all kinds of knowledge. We increase our knowledge of characters on television screens. We increase our knowledge of fictional beings in books. I remember when we were growing up, there was this book called um, Meals and... The, the storyline never changes in that Meals and Meals. They hate themselves in the beginning, love themselves in the end. I never read, read any of them because the storyline is the same. Or they love themselves in the beginning, in between. Something happens and then they meet themselves 20 years later. Yeah. Um, and many people read so many of those things that they think that is exactly how life is. So they're still looking for their boyfriend that they had missed 20 years ago. They are married. We increase our knowledge in our ability to play games. So the guy who took a machine gun went into, the, into a young school in Sandy Hills in Sandy, and shot children at random. Investigation found out how many days he kept on playing a certain game. Now there are certain games that are out there, do you understand? that you need to be you need to check what your children are watching and how long they spend on it because everything that is in publicity tries to enter into your mind that's why anybody listening over and over and ever listening over and over and over and over to tupac to sooner or later you will become a killer yourself. You will become... Do you know words that you hear over and over again? You begin to say it. Because the, the, the target is not the scene. It is using scene to get to the knowledge. So you retain the knowledge. Did I hear an amen? And so, watch this. It says, so, we increase our knowledge of fix, uh, fix, fictional beings in books we increase our knowledge in our ability to play games we don't ever stop learning often we go about life acquiring knowledge we make choices on what we wish to retain we focus on one thing over another we let certain things become more important to us than other things now, when a person chooses not to like to retain God in their knowledge, they are choosing to abandon what they know of God. Just as we all learn right from wrong as we grow up, we can choose whether or not we like to retain the knowledge of right and wrong. And if we choose to like the knowledge of wrong doing over right doing, our lives will reflect that. What we like to retain in our minds set our course of life. Anyone who chooses not to like retaining God in their knowledge is setting a course away from God. And without God, we have no hope for eternal life and no hope for redemption. Because they did not retain God in their knowledge. So let me give you practical examples. In fact, I've just given one already. So, an issue happens. In church, the holy sanctuary, the place where God reigns, the place where you have said he's the best thing, and where you've bowed down and worshipped him, and where you know your redeemer, Lives, lives. Hallelujah. Which other song did we sing today? Huh? Huh? Oh, beautiful. Oh, be a beautiful one. That he is the beautiful one in our lives, isn't it? Okay. All right. 
We know all that. But in church, somebody just turned a beautiful one. Just as you were going out of the door. Just in your department. Just they sat beside you and pastor said, turn to two or three people. And unconsciously they forgot to turn to you. Seriously they forgot to turn to you. Because I know you will not sit with somebody who will not turn with you. <laughs> Hello somebody. And since they did not turn with you to you and said hello, from that day onwards, you have decided in your heart that I will no more greet that person anymore. And I hear this popular, isn't it for us to come to church and everybody leaves? Okay. Which means some way, somehow, when the boys were talking about when Emmanuel was giving and the recital of first corinthians that love never counts anything wrong some way or the other you clapped but you didn't retain it in your knowledge h ah, 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 no no show me the money I, if I <laughs> somehow somehow as we came to pray Throughout this month, and if we've been coming to our Monday and Friday prayer meeting, our prayer, our prayer points have been different. It has been, let your choice be done. Let your purpose be done. Let your will be done. But somehow, somehow along the line, you have seen this girl. And because you saw the girl, and you saw what you want to see, Somehow, you didn't ask God about it. Because between the time of the prayer time and now, you did not retain God in your knowledge. Okay, let me give you another one. I know both of you didn't talk as you came to church this morning. That's fine. But somehow in between the service, there is no week that pastor doesn't touch on marriage. One way, he just mentioned that God is, he didn't even mention, even the choir saying that he's the beautiful one and that received the beautiful one in your life and accept God and forgive and move on and you were smiling everything was fine until you got back into that car somehow between the church and the car a demon had jumped on your knowledge because somewhere and when you got home you refused to cook the dinner you are the guy that always cooks the dinner you just refuse because we're not playmates. But somehow, you have not retained God in your knowledge. Can I give you another one? Hello. You woke up on Monday morning. On Sunday, pastor had just finished preaching. Thank God for the job you have. There are so many people who are out there looking for one. It might not be your best choice, but thank God at least he puts food on your table. And you said, amen. Father. Oh God, I'm sorry for moaning and complaining. I know I've got a, a PhD in moaning and complaining, but today I give up all my degrees. And then, on Monday morning, you woke up. I said, oh my God, I'm going to that job again. Somehow, between Sunday and Monday, you had not retained God in your knowledge. And when you don't do that, the Bible says God gives you up. So, the problem of all those bad characters 
has nothing to do with a devil or a demon. Pastor, you just didn't know it was a demon. Did I tell you? I mean, I've shared this testimony with you before. So, a so long time ago, very, very long time ago, you can't know who I'm talking about. Every time, a long time ago, one young guy came to me and said, Pastor, I just don't know why. I've tried everything, but I just don't know why. I just find myself committing fornication. He has, he's not married. I just sleep with this person. I just sleep with that Pastor, I've tried. I know he's a demon. I pray that the demon of um, um, uh, um, no, no, there was a word. There are very specialists in this thing. Demon <laughs> of impurity or something come out of me in the name of Jesus. I say, ah! Come here. So let me pray for him. Father, I thank you for your son who has come to you to repent. Lord, I give you praise. You see his heart and he says he's a demon. However, I'm going to pray for him in a other way. Lord, in the name of Jesus, next time when this guy plans to sleep or, wants, or sleeps with someone, may he catch gonorrhea. May he have AIDS. May he begin to dry up, Lord. May things begin to, may scales appear on him. May he begin to just, may everything, may, may, may he be a disgrace to his manhood. May all kinds of disease come upon him. In the name of Jesus, so shall he be. And God, you will do exceedingly abundantly. I said you can go. Not to say that that guy never slept with anybody again. You said he's a demon. I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since I prayed that prayer, he didn't. Because somewhere, somewhere, he retained the knowledge of the prayer. He retained God by force and by fire in his mind. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you understanding where I'm going? Are you the Bible says they knew God. So it's not a matter of I'm not I'm not in the business of knowing God alone. I must glorify him, be thankful, and retain God in my knowledge. It's part of thankful that I said last week is why God creates some you know, I said so last God created you. He says, male and female, he created them. Bible says in Psalms 139, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. But you come out and you said, God made a mistake. I should have come as a female. Before you were born in your mother's womb, I knew you. So God that knows that he should create you as a man and said, from today on, you will be called Steve. You now, because you were not grateful for God creating you as Steve, you did not honor God for God creating you as Steve, and you did not retain the scriptures that before you were even formed, I knew you. You now decided that you want to become Eve. So you start the Eve process. And before and a long while down the road, we don't even know what to call you. Amen? It's not a problem. I, I can help you. No, I'm scared. Seriously help you. However, one of the first things I need to help you in is to come to terms and be happy how you are. But because they did not retain God in their mind, they were not grateful. Let me read this as I close. You see, If we do not fulfill glorifying him, being thankful and retaining God, the Bible says God will give us over to something else. And give me the list. And the list that comes up begins to tell me that God has given us up to all kinds of stuff. Because we did not retain him in our knowledge, we decided to retain something else. How, let me give you another example how, how to retain God in our knowledge. Now, we fall sick. We go through suffering. Do you understand? We go through hard times. Through many tribulations shall we enter the kingdom of heaven. 
The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, the violence they keep by force. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Though this flesh of mine be knitted up in worms, yet in it I will see God. For I know that my redeemer liveth. Hello? I can quote the Bible. The, 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 the Bible says that for your affliction, for this affliction that you have is but for a moment. But it will reduce. The Bible says that when you go through the persecutions and trials, it will produce patience. Patience will produce hope and hope make it not ashamed for the love of God is spread in your heart. So we go through hard times. But if you retain God in your mind and in your knowledge, you will know that hard times don't last. And that God is still with you. If you retain God in your knowledge, it is because the children of Israel did not retain God in their knowledge. That is why when they, go, when they went through the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea for them. When God parted the Red Sea for them, and they go to a place there was no water, God gave them water. If God who parted the Red Sea delivered you from the hands of the Egypt, parted the Red Sea, and gave you water, would he not give you food? But because we did not retain the miracles of God in our minds, sometimes I'm shocked that God that blessed you in something else, in an area of your life, because you are going through another area of your life, you decide to backslide. You decide not to read the word of God. You decide to moan God. It is alarming to find out that the same God that did a miracle in your life in one particular area, can he not do a miracle in your life in that particular area? But here's the problem. They did not retain. Retain means to possess. To keep, to hold fast. To have someone close by you. Do you have an amen? Now watch this as we, as we end. Retain God. Keep that scripture. Retain God. So many years ago, um, Christine's nursery decided to take them on a trip to... Oh, Pastor, this left. Margate or somewhere like this. And we got to the place. All the children, everywhere. So we settled down and I was trying to bring out the basket. And, uh, and Pastor D was doing something else. And as we had Emmanuel then. So they said, we can bring Emmanuel. So trying to sort it out. By the time we looked up, 30 seconds, Christine has disappeared. We couldn't find Christine. We told the teacher, has anybody seen Christine? Everybody went to the panel. We couldn't find Christine. Five minutes, we couldn't find Christine. First thing that came to me, this is retaining God in your knowledge, is that the angels of the Lord surround those who love him. One way or the other, I was at peace. That God's eyes is upon the righteous. And he will give his angels charge over them so that I will not dash their foot again. But everybody else had started panicking. So I started, God, where is this girl? So I started walking. I just started walking. Walking away from the natural, away from where you're supposed to be looking at. I just walked. I just walked. I just walked. I just walked. And I walked. And all of a sudden, I just saw this bouncing. Castle, and I saw one black girl. I knew it was my daughter because there was not many on that. It was, it was cold. Black people don't come out during the cold. That's why Elder, Elder, Elder Bar is having a problem for you to run. Because you don't want to come out. I just said, uh, Christine, where have you been? I, come, come, yeah. I was carrying, I was, oh, you found everybody. What, what do you want to say? For you to hear number. Here's, the, here's the issue. Here's the issue. Because I did not retain Christine. Because retain means to hold close. She left me. When she left me, peace didn't come upon me. Joy didn't come upon me. Happiness didn't come upon me. Neither did it come to the people around us. Panic, unhappiness, all kinds of evil thoughts, danger. Because I did not retain her. When you don't retain God, these are the things that happen. So, in 2014, the three watchwords is we need to honor God. We need to be thankful. And we need to retain God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Just bow your heads where you are. And just say a word of prayer.
The word of prayer is actually a time of reflection. Solomon gave us the answer to retaining God. And that's what I want you to meditate upon. Solomon concluded, the wisest man on earth, concluded in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He said, let us give us 13 the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all. So how do I retain God? Fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all. After Solomon had done all the things and come to the end of his life, after he had gone all over the place, after he had made stupendous amount of money that the Bible says nobody can ever be as rich as him, he says the conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep his commandment. I want you to ask, how, what area am I not retaining God in my knowledge? You cannot retain if you don't read his word. You cannot retain if you don't pray. You cannot retain if you don't fast. You cannot retain if you are not obedient to God's commandments. Retaining God says that not my will, but your will. Retaining God means that I don't want to do it, but because you have commanded it, I will do it. Retaining God is whatever you say, I will do. Mary told them, he said, whatever he tells you to do, do. And a miracle came. If you are looking for a miracle in your life, retain God in your knowledge. Don't begin to choose when you come to church. Choose when you do stuff. Choose when you serve God. In honoring God, you are saying, God, I'm thankful I'm alive. So I give you praise. Because even as you live today, there will be a test for you to see whether you have retained God in your knowledge. Retaining God means to retain his commandments, his words, the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. Do I retain God in the area of forgiveness? Do I retain God in the area of giving? Do I retain God in the area of praying? Do I retain God in the area of reading his word? How can I retain in my knowledge something I have not acquired? So for 60 seconds, just say, God, come into my life and be the Lord of my life. He's already your savior. But he wants to be the Lord. Father, we give you praise. I call this a time of reflection. Father, we give you praise. Thank you. We're in the loss for Christ. God-given dreams. Not the enemy.